QuickBooks Online 2023 Account and Settings, Expenses, Payments, Time, and Advanced Tabs. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file we set up in a prior presentation using the 30-day free trial. We also have open in another tab the free QuickBooks Online test drive sample company which we will use primarily to look at the differences between the business view and the accountant view. We're currently in the business view as can be noted by the icons on the left. I'm going to go to the cog of drop and switch to the accountant view, my preferred view. But as we go through items in our practice problem, we'll try to toggle back and forth to see where things are located under both the accountant view and the business view. So you can use whichever one that you prefer. Note that if you also want to have the free QuickBooks Online test drive opened, you've got to open it typically in an incognito window or in a different browser. If you're using Google Chrome, you can do that by hitting the three dots up top and open up a new incognito window and then you can search for QuickBooks Online test drive or if you're using Google Chrome for example you can open it up in another browser such as Firefox. Quick overview of our objective business objective revenue generation accounting or bookkeeping objective to facilitate the financial transactions to create the financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, or profit and loss and related reports as easily as possible so that the business can focus on revenue generation. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it and not on the bookkeeping process. Also, our job is to make it as easy as possible to communicate as we record financial transactions with those we do business with, customers, vendors, and employees. To do that, we set up the QuickBooks file. We're then gonna be setting up our settings as we are looking at now. We're gonna be doing those fundamental foundational things like the lists, setting up our chart of accounts, setting up our products and services, and then we can get to the day-to-day -day activity of entering the financial transactions, which we primarily see under the new button. And we then have our transactions here, which the data input forms, we're going to try to make as easy as possible. So these can be used to create the financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, or profit and loss and related reports. Then we communicate with the people we do business with, with the information on the left, such as the sales area, which I would call like the customer center, for example, the expense area, which I would call say the vendor center and the payroll area, which would be the employee center, for example. So that's the general idea going back to the dashboard. We are now in the cog dropdown looking at our settings. I'm going to keep on going through the settings for this foundational items when we set up the new company file. Last time we got down to the sales area. This time we're going to the expenses and we're going to go all the way through to the advanced. So expenses, this is going to be kind of like the cash outflow uh, side of things. So these are going to be the, the check forms, the expense forms, the bill forms. At the end of the cycle, we would expect money to be going out for these items. So you got bills and expenses. So show items uh, table on expenses and purchase forms. So that's going to then add a purchase product table on the expense and purchase forms so you can itemize products and services. That's on by default. We will keep that on as the default. It says show tags field and expense and purchase forms. So it lets you, lets you add tags. We're not going to be dealing a lot with tags because that's going to be another kind of specialty area. We might have a, another section on tags in and of themselves. If you're not using them, you could turn that off because it'll be a little less busy. I think QuickBooks is trying to kind of promote the use of tags because that's a, a differentiating thing that they have than many other softwares. But again, 
it's kind of a specialty area, so we won't be using it for the most part in this practice problem. Track expense and items by customer. Adds a customer column on expense and purchase forms so you can track expenses and items by customer. So let's check that that one out a bit more in a bit more detail. If I close this back out and I was to open say an expense form, a check or a bill type of form. Let's open like an expense form for example. You can see here it doesn't have any customer field on the right hand side by default the vendor is who we're paying up top. Now I could add a customer field so that I can then then add the items that I'm paying for possibly to an invoice in the future. You got to be careful with this. We'll talk about it more in the future, but to do that, I can close this out and we'll turn this one on cog drop down account and settings. And I'm going to turn that on expenses. And then we're going to go into here and it says track expense an item by customer. I'm going to turn that on, make expense and items billable. So this one, it says adds billable column on expense and purchase forms. So you can add billable expenses and items on sales forms. So let me turn that on and I'll show you what I mean by that. And then you've got your added options, make expense items billable. But before I get into that, let's just look at this first. Let's save this and look at the impact. I'm going to close this back out again. And then I'm going to hit the plus button and go into that same expense form. This is a form we typically use kind of like a check form and we would have a vendor up top for something that we're paying for. You can see now we have added a billable item and a customer. So why would you need a customer if you're dealing with an expense form? Well, possibly I'm in a system where possibly it's a job cost system and I'm paying for expenses that I, I'm going to apply directly to an invoice. So I want to have an expense that's going to be recorded here that next time when I make an invoice for the customer that I apply this expense to, it will then pull in as a line item to that customer. Now you got to be careful with that because the question then is when I pull it over to the invoice, we're, it, we're not using items to do that. So when I pull it over to the invoice, I don't really have a, a formal item. So the question is, how is QuickBooks going to record it? Is it going to record it as income or a reduction to the expense account? So you got to kind of be careful when using that that tool, although it can be an effective tool. We'll dive into it a little bit more in a future presentation. We will keep that on for now and touch on that in our practice problem. So I'm going to hit the, the cog again and then go to the account and settings. And now that we have some understanding of that, let's go back into the expenses then you have the added options here. So you can make expense and items billable. You can mark up with a default rate. So now that we've determined that we're going to have some expenses that we might apply to a customer so that we can pull them over into an invoice, do I want to pull them over at what we paid for it? Or maybe I have a standard markup. I mark it up by some percent when I, when I, when I invoice the client. So I have a standard markup for those things that I've been purchasing. So, and the other way you can do it is have the cost there and then just add your markup to the total of the invoice, which might be a, another way that you could do that. Track billable expense items uh, as income. So when you, when they pull over to the income side, when you invoice them, you, typically you would want them to show up on an income line. You're not typically going to want them to be like a decrease in an expense. So if you paid for like supplies expense, and then you added supplies expense to the invoice. I don't want the invoice to then record a decrease to supplies expense. I want it to record income typically. So you have income minus the expenses, your net income. That's usually how you'd want to see it. So that gets a little tricky because you're not using items. So we have here track. So in a single account or in multiple accounts down here adds a use for billable expense checkbox to an accounts edit uh, screen in the chart of accounts. So you can kind of apply where you want it to go uh, more clearly here. So we'll keep the defaults and then you've got the charging of the sales tax. And so sales tax obviously is gonna muddy up the situation when you have to determine whether or not when you pull it into the invoice, is it now gonna be applicable to sales tax or not? So you can turn that on if so. You got the default uh, bill payment terms so this is kind of like we saw on the invoice. If I enter a bill 
into the system, that means that I'm gonna pay it at a future time. Now, the term bill for QuickBooks is a very specific term. So we can use it in a lot of different ways outside of QuickBooks, even in accounting. But for QuickBooks, it means we got a bill from the customer and we're entering it into our system before we pay it. We're not just gonna pay it with a check. We could get an invoice or a bill from a customer and pay it with a check, which means we wouldn't use the bill form. If I enter it with a bill form, that means that we're gonna pay it in the future. Now it doesn't have a default here because you know, you're probably gonna have to enter the manual bill, bill date of when it is due rather than just give a default here because we're the one receiving the bill. But I'm gonna put a default on it in our practice problem so we can just see, so it'll generate that automatically for us. So that's gonna be when it's gonna be due by default. Let's save it. And then you got the purchase orders. Now the purchase orders would only be in place if you're in a system where you have inventory and you're able to basically request inventory without actually paying for uh, the inventory. So it's a request kind of form to your vendors before you, before you enter the bill or the, the check form or expense form for the inventory. So use purchase orders. So if you don't use them, you could turn them off and then you won't have that added kind of item. It'll be a little bit less uh, clutter possibly. Go to the, to the list. You can customize the field to manage. So if you wanted another line item in the invoice form that, that, that you can sort by, you can add that. Custom transaction numbers lets you use your own number. I'll keep it uh, where it is by the default. And then the default message, you can add a message on the person purchase order here by default and test that out if you want as well. So I'm gonna save that. And then you've got your messages. So remember with communication, oftentimes it's done by email now. So we've got the default messages when we send out the email. Default email message sent, you've got dear, and then you can have full name, first name, company name, and so on. This is for uh, the purchase order email. Please find purchase order attached to this email. So you can change the, the default if you so choose. Email me a copy, so you can put that there if you wanna have a copy, the CC and so on, if you wanna have those as well. So I'm gonna say, say, obviously the CC is visible, and I think the BCC is not visible. So that, so that you can add it without you know someone else seeing that you're added and so on. And then you've got the QuickBooks payments. So get paid more ways. So if you go into this, this is kind of like an add-on type of feature. We might do another kind of section on it, but you would have to, to set up online payments in order to use basically this feature. So uh, we might test that out later, but not now. And then the time, if we go into the time in general, the first uh, work uh, week, so we started on Sunday is the default, but maybe you, you started on Monday, so you can set that as the default if you want. Uh, first day of, of the work week. And then the timesheet uh, shows service fields. Uh, when entering timesheet, lets you specify service performed. So the time, when we enter the time, uh, that's gonna be the, the time that we enter that we might use for payroll, and we might also use that to process an invoice, which is quite common in like a, a, a job cost kind of system or like a, an accounting firm or a law firm where you're gonna be charging the time. And this will, when entering time, lets you specify the service that's performed, allow time to be, to be billable. So when we enter the time, adds a checkbox to specify whether the activities uh, should be billed to the customer. So if we're entering the time, because we then want to pull that information in a similar fashion as we saw with the expense form into an invoice, then we want to be able to assign the customer so that we can then pull that information over. We'll touch on that in the practice problem. Show billing rate to, to users entering the form. So we'll keep that off by the default. Let's go into the advanced items. Accounting. So first month of the fiscal year is oftentimes, so this is the first month, not the last month. So the fiscal year is, is like your business year. Oftentimes that's the same as the calendar year, meaning January to December. But if it's not, then you wanna make sure to change this. And as, as you do, make sure that you're talking about the first year. This is important because uh, when you run your reports, QuickBooks defaults that it's gonna run reports for a year and it rolls over the, the closing process based on your fiscal year. 
So if your fiscal year is wrong, it's gonna, it's gonna, the whole closing process thing is gonna get messed up. So if you have a calendar year, it's right by default, January is the first month of the year. But if you've got some other year, then make sure that you're, you're accounting for that. First month, uh, first month of income tax year, same as the fiscal year we're gonna say, uh, if it was different, maybe you have a fiscal year that's different and then you have your tax year, which is January. Ask your accountant about that if that's the case. Accounting method, I highly, highly recommend keeping that on accrual unless you have some, some reason to do otherwise. Because when you're thinking about the accounting method, you can't just choose to be in a cash-based method by just toggling this thing over. What really happens is you're on a cash-based method. This is a, a flow chart. Whether or not you're using forms that are accrual-based or cash-based. So for the customer cycle, for example, uh, if you just enter a deposit form and record the sales when you get the deposit, you are on a cash-based system even though you have the capacity to enter accrual transactions. If you're using a create sales receipts form, that's like the form used at a cash register. You are on a cash based system, even if you've toggled over to the accrual thing. It's only if you enter invoices that you've now switched over to kind of an accrual system. So the fact that you're using invoices means that you're doing something in an accrual system. If you toggle over to a cash based system and try to use an invoice, then you would think the system's not going to not going to actually record the revenue until you receive the payment which isn't typically what you would want to have happened you would want it to record it if you're using an invoice when you record the invoice so so if you're thinking about toggling that over or or switching this to cash you probably want to make sure that you're clearing that with an accountant or cpa as to why you would be doing that by default i would suggest accrual so close the books now at the at the end of a of an of a period you could you could close the books here and this could be a useful thing to do because a common very common problem with quickbooks is the idea is the capacity for people to change data say in a prior year and what happens then is that your your current data is messed up because you end up with these timing differences that happen so for example uh, if you if you if the year ended in 2022 you finalized your your financial statements because you did your tax return based on the quickbooks data and then you go back into the prior year and delete a bunch of stuff like checks and whatnot that didn't clear it might it, it might be right that the checks were wrong and you need to delete them to move forward but you're messing up the prior year's income statement which has already closed out and that means that you're gonna that that your retained earnings or whatever wouldn't roll over so to really fix that you would have to you would have to do an amended tax return or something if you fix so you don't want to do that what you want to do is have those adjustments happen in the current period so you've got to be very careful deleting stuff in the prior period one way you can stop yourself and someone else from doing that is to say okay we closed out the year i filed the tax return i'm closing out the prior year and you will only be able to change things after you see a warning or enter a password in an attempt to hopefully only allow people that know what they're doing or have thought it through to change anything in the prior period. Okay, so I'm gonna toggle that off as the default for now. Uh, by default, QuickBooks is quite flexible with deleting stuff. <laughs> so company type, this is, I'm gonna say yes here. And so we got the sole proprietorship, partnership, small corporation. We chose this when we set up the company file. There's not a big difference in terms of the GL accounts when you choose these 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 uh, different options here. Uh, so, but we're gonna keep it on. So we'll talk more about the accounting related to it in terms of what happens with the equity section accounts and so on when we go through the practice problem, but we're just gonna keep it on the sole proprietor for our practice problem. So we got the chart of accounts, enable account numbers. Now account numbers can be great, but people often mess them up because they don't know how to add account numbers. In a, in a way that makes sense. So they get all tied up with account numbers. So so by default, they turn the account numbers off, which is what we're gonna do here. I think we're gonna have a section that just shows you the general items of account numbers. We possibly have that or a course on that. So if you wanna learn the account numbers, you can, but by default, we're gonna be putting them off uh, here. And the thing with account numbers, they give you a little bit more control about the orderings of your accounts. And, the, and less flipping of accounts, changing the order 
uh, year over year because it's gonna uh, and, and whatnot because as as the as you add accounts and whatnot. Uh, so so but if you don't add the account numbers properly, the account numbers will actually be not making sense. They'll be out of order in essence because the, the chart of accounts is first in order by account type, balance sheet accounts, then income statement accounts. The account numbers need to line up with that and that's how they have to be added. So we'll talk more. I think we have a section on that and it says uh, tips, uh, tips account and then billable expense ac account. So this account uh, that, that goes with the settings, expense, bills, expense, track billable expenses and items as income in a single account. So we're gonna keep that off by the default here. So I'm gonna keep that. Okay, next one. We're gonna say categories. And just, let me just recap this again. If you, that tips we saw setting before, this is the account that goes with the setting sales form uh, contact. So if you set that up, then you need the account that's gonna basically be set up with it here. And that's what they're basically saying. All right, let's go to the categories. We got the classes. Now the classes and location tracking are another field similar to the tags that allow you an added level of, of tracking, particularly on the income statement. So if I wanted to track items on the income statement by location uh, or, or by department or something like that, then I can turn on one of, they act in a similar fashion. They have some differences, but they act similar. And then I can print my income statement out and, and break it out columns by location and by class and then have a total column so it's really a neat tool but only applicable in certain in certain situations so if you have different departments you can actually use it if you have both your business and your personal stuff that you're tracking in quickbooks which isn't normally recommended but it's possible to do with the class tracking to break that out especially if you just have a schedule c a uh, sole proprietorship we have courses on that if you want to check that out but uh, we're going to keep that off for the default note that if you're adding levels of of information by like location or department then you've got a whole lot of options you want to think about though one is that you can have sub accounts by location or department or two you can turn on class tracking or location tracking which is going to give you another column on the income statement uh, by location or department or uh, or you can use the tags, which is another way that you can add some some level of tracking information. So so you want to kind of think about those. There's a lot of different variant uses that you can use those for. And the options that they have are getting... You can also... The same with the projects or a job cost system. You can use projects to do some... So there's various ways to, to do the same thing these times, which is great, but can also lead to paralysis <laughs> of too many different ways to do something. So you want to make sure you pick one. So automation, pre-fill forms uh, with previously entered uh, content. So automatically fills other fields of the form based on the last saved transaction for the customer vendor or employee. That helps us to enter data and then in the following time frame, enter it more easily as it picks up the transactions similar to what we did in the past. So that is a great tool. We'll keep that on by default. Automatically apply credits automatically applies credits to the next invoice you create for for the same customer so if they have any uh like if you have credits meaning outstanding amounts they that need to apply lowering their bill that are outstanding for a customer it'll apply those out automatically most companies turn on this setting turn it off if you if you're property management so we'll keep that on by default property management might have a credit that's outstanding all the time uh and then they have a security deposit. So if you've got a security deposit that you're recording that you don't want to apply to the invoice, of course, because you're gonna to have to keep it outstanding, then you'll have, but any other company, usually when you have a credit, an outstanding balance, the next invoice that you create, you're gonna lower their bill by the outstanding credit is the general idea. So that's on by default, we'll keep that on. Automatically invoice unbilled activity. So automatically creates invoice for customers with unbilled activities. I won't do that because I want to actually create the bill. So if I had an expense that I entered an, a, a bill, uh, a, a customer into an expense or a timesheet that I, I'm, I don't want to automatically create the invoice. I would like to do that periodically and go through the, the invoicing process. That's my general thought on that. Automatically apply bill payments. When you add bill payments in the register, 
uh, the setting automatically applies the payments to the oldest existing bill which kind of makes sense by default if you were to use that so i'm going to keep that on by default projects this is another kind of specialty area which might be used kind of like in a job cost system or tracking particular projects another great tool uh, we might have i think we might have courses in and of that on its own but tracking projects is kind of a specialty area and like a job cost system system in general is kind of a specialty area in and of itself so we're not going to have our major focus in on projects with the practice problem but like i say there's some overlap between tracking projects tracking jobs uh and tracking tracking class tracking location tracking using tags you know which of those are you going to use for whatever specific need that you're trying to fulfill uh you want to think through that uh if you have any specific need currency so we're going to be using the united states dollar now note that the general accounting will be similar if you're in other other countries to use like your 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 home currency will be like your your default currency it gets a little uh, complicated when you're dealing with transactions in multiple currencies meaning you have a home currency and then you have transactions in other currencies because then you've got this exchange kind of issue so you would only turn on multiple currencies lets you track transactions in foreign currencies uh, use it only if you have bank account customers or vendors that don't use your home currency so note what you can do here you can set your home currency to whatever home currency is applicable and that's fine but if you have transactions in multiple currencies, then that's when you have to turn this on. And I don't think you can turn it back off once you turn it on, although it just adds some fields a little, a little gets things a little bit more messy, but not too big of an issue. But uh, we, I think we have a whole course on that if you wanna dive into, into that as well, but it's a kind of a specialty area too. So business network, allow mem members to find me so it says uh, when a member searches for your company they'll see your website and company city so on only members request uh, to accept to see your company email so i'm going to turn that off by default because it's a practice problem your company won't be shown in the business network but any uh, member you request to connect with can still see so i'm going to say okay that's fine and then other platforms or other preferences date format so i'm going to keep the default which is which is the month day year but you depending on your location there's different preferences uh for the date some sometimes when you're saving stuff it actually is makes more sense to say the year the month than the date because you want to save it you know by year month and then date typically maybe but i'm going to keep the default number format this is the united states typical month number format but you might have different number formats depending on your location warn if duplicate check number is used that's a standard internal control i'll keep that on warn me if i enter a bill number that's already there you could turn that on but i'll keep it off by the default warn if duplicate journal numbers is used i'll keep the default there sign me out if inactive for one hour so this is a, an internal control over quickbooks online you are in an online system you're working on a website so uh, at some, you know, if you're if you're leaving the workstation for some time, you would think that you might want the station to turn off after some point. The default is an hour. You can set and adjust that if you so choose. So those are those general settings. I don't think we've done anything uh, going anywhere unusual in terms of the 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 business view versus the accountant view. So. We've just been under the cog here and we went to the plus button, which are basically the same under the business and accountant view.